Did you know that the woolly mammoth, an ice age giant that roamed the earth for over 400,000 years, disappeared around 4,000 years ago? That's right, long after the Great Pyramids were built. But here's the crazy part. Scientists are now closer than ever to bringing this ancient beast back to life. With advancements in genetics, species that have long been extinct, like the woolly mammoth, might soon walk the earth again. But what about others? Could the iconic Tasmanian tiger or even the saber-toothed tiger be next in line for resurrection? If you could bring back one extinct animal, which would it be? Welcome to the world of de-extinction, an emerging field where cutting-edge science meets the desire to right the wrongs of the past. De-extinction is the process of bringing extinct species back to life, using modern techniques like cloning, gene editing, and selective breeding. It's not just a sci-fi fantasy. It's happening right now. So why is this so important? Well, beyond the cool factor of seeing creatures like the woolly mammoth roam the earth again, de-extinction has huge implications for conservation. Imagine being able to restore damaged ecosystems by reintroducing species that once played key roles, or perhaps reversing the extinction of animals like the Tasmanian tiger, creatures that vanished due to human activities. While exciting, it's not without its challenges. From ethical concerns to environmental impacts, de-extinction sparks a critical debate. Just because we can bring back an extinct animal, does that mean we should? Do you think science should bring back extinct species or should they stay in the past? Extinction is a natural part of Earth's history, but it often comes at a heavy cost to biodiversity. Over millions of years, the planet has experienced five mass extinction events, the most famous being the asteroid impact that wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. But it's not just cataclysmic events that lead to extinction. More recently, human activities have accelerated the rate of extinction. Habitat destruction, overhunting, pollution, and climate change are pushing species to the brink at a pace we've never seen before. In fact, scientists believe we're living through the sixth mass extinction, where animals like the northern white rhino, Yangtze River dolphin, and our very own Tasmanian tiger have vanished, many due to human intervention. When a species disappears, it leaves behind a hole in its ecosystem. Its predators lose a food source, plants that depend on it for seed dispersal may struggle to survive, and biodiversity as a whole takes a hit. This loss doesn't just affect animals, it impacts us humans too. Our ecosystems, agriculture, and climate resilience all depend on biodiversity. What do you think is the biggest threat to wildlife today? In the case of the Tasmanian tiger, it wasn't a natural disaster that caused its extinction, but human hunting and habitat loss. The last known thylacine died in captivity in 1936, and with it, a unique predator was lost from the Australian landscape forever. As a bonus, at the end of this video, I will include the last known footage of the Tasmanian tiger. Today, science is pushing the boundaries of what was once thought impossible. Thanks to groundbreaking advancements in genetics, cloning, and gene editing, the idea of de-extinction has moved from science fiction to a real possibility. But how does it actually work? At the core of de-extinction is DNA. For extinct species like the Tasmanian tiger or the woolly mammoth, scientists are working to extract usable DNA from preserved remains, such as bones, fur, or even fossils. Once they have viable genetic material, the next step involves cloning, gene splicing, or using the DNA to modify a closely related species. Take the passenger pigeon, for example. Once one of the most abundant birds in North America, it went extinct in the early 20th century due to overhunting. Today, scientists are using DNA from museum specimens to attempt to bring it back by editing the genes of its closest living relative, the band-tailed pigeon. Then there's the woolly mammoth, perhaps the most famous candidate for de-extinction. Using the DNA of frozen mammoths found in Siberia, scientists are combining it with the genetic code of modern-day elephants. The goal? to create a hybrid species that closely resembles its Ice Age ancestor. This effort, led by teams like those at Harvard University, could see woolly mammoths roaming the tundras once again. And what about the saber-toothed cat? Although the challenges are immense, the discovery of well-preserved fossils and advances in cloning techniques could one day lead to the revival of this fearsome predator. But one of the most realistic de-extinction candidates is the Tasmanian tiger. 
The Thylacine Genome Project is actively working to map the Tasmanian tiger's complete DNA sequence. By combining this data with modern cloning techniques, researchers hope to one day bring this marsupial predator back to the wild. While scientists are still refining the technology, these advancements offer real hope that species we thought were lost forever might one day walk the earth again. However, the journey from DNA in a lab to a living, breathing animal is a complex one with many hurdles along the way. Which extinct animal do you think scientists should focus on bringing back first? While the idea of resurrecting extinct animals is thrilling, it comes with a series of ethical dilemmas and ecological concerns. The most pressing question is, just because we can bring back an extinct species, does that mean we should? One major concern is the impact on existing ecosystems. Nature is a delicate balance, and introducing an extinct species could create unforeseen problems. What if these resurrected animals become invasive, competing with or even displacing modern species? Imagine reintroducing a predator like the saber-toothed cat or Tasmanian tiger. What effect would that have on today's food chains? Then there's the issue of resources. De-extinction is incredibly expensive and time-consuming. Some argue that the money spent on reviving long-gone species could be better invested in conserving the animals on the brink of extinction today. For example, could the millions spent on bringing back the woolly mammoth be better used to save endangered elephants? And what about the welfare of the animals themselves? Cloning and gene editing are not perfect processes. Many animals born through these techniques suffer from health issues, shorten lifespans, or difficulty adapting to their environments. Is it fair to bring a species back to life if it may struggle to survive in the modern world? And beyond ethics, there's a practical concern, habitats. Many species, like the woolly mammoth, thrived in environments that no longer exist. Even the Tasmanian tiger's habitat has changed dramatically since its extinction. Where would these animals live? How would we ensure their long-term survival in a world so different from the one they once knew? As exciting as de-extinction is, it forces us to ask tough questions about our responsibility to the planet, the future of conservation, and whether we're prepared for the consequences of reintroducing species that have been gone for centuries. How would reintroducing an extinct species impact today's ecosystems? Despite the challenges, there are ongoing projects and research initiatives that are tackling these concerns head-on, striving to bring extinct species back in a responsible and thoughtful way. One of the most well-known efforts is the Woolly Mammoth Revival Project, spearheaded by scientists at Harvard University. Their approach goes beyond just reviving an ancient species they're aiming to use a hybrid mammoth elephant to help restore ecosystems that have suffered from climate change. The idea is that woolly mammoths, or mammoth-like elephants, could help slow down permafrost thaw in the Arctic by trampling snow and preventing the release of greenhouse gases. This project highlights a new direction in de-extinction using it not just to bring animals back, but to solve today's environmental problems. Meanwhile, the Revive and Restore organization is working to bring back the passenger pigeon using gene editing techniques to ensure that the new birds can adapt to modern environments. Their goal is to reintroduce the species into carefully managed ecosystems, avoiding the risk of disrupting existing bird populations. And then there's the Thalassine Genome Project, which is perhaps the most relevant to our discussion today. This team of Australian scientists is meticulously working to sequence the complete genome of the Tasmanian tiger. But they're not just focusing on the technicalities of cloning. They're also collaborating with conservationists to identify suitable habitats and prepare for the potential reintroduction of the thylacine into Tasmania's changing environment. Many of these projects are now addressing the ethical and ecological concerns we've mentioned. Some initiatives are working closely with governments and local communities to ensure that if a species is brought back, it can thrive without harming existing ecosystems. There are also ongoing discussions about the best use of resources, focusing on balancing de-extinction with efforts to protect endangered species. Ultimately, the future of de-extinction lies in responsible research, thoughtful planning, and a clear focus on both scientific innovation and ecological conservation. The dream of seeing species like the woolly mammoth or the Tasmanian tiger roam the earth again is becoming more realistic with every breakthrough. 
but as we move forward, it's essential that these efforts are driven by the desire to heal our planet, not just rewrite its history. We stand at the crossroads of past, present, and future. De-extinction is no longer just about reviving lost species, it's about how we shape the world we want to live in. Do you believe de-extinction is a viable tool for conservation? As we've seen, de-extinction is more than just a scientific curiosity, it holds the potential to change the future of conservation. By leveraging advancements in genetics, we may not only bring back lost species but also restore ecosystems and undo some of the damage caused by human activity. While the challenges are significant, the progress made so far is inspiring. Projects like the Woolly Mammoth Revival and the Thylacine Genome Project are helping us imagine a world where science and nature work hand in hand to restore balance to our planet. The real significance of de-extinction lies in its potential to reshape conservation strategies. By studying and recreating extinct species, we can better understand the factors that led to their demise, helping us protect the species that are endangered today. De-extinction could become a tool not just for bringing back the past, but for securing the future. De-extinction offers hope, not just for species like the Tasmanian tiger, but for the entire natural world. It challenges us to think bigger, act responsibly, and work towards a future where humans and wildlife can thrive together. How could de-extinction shape the future of conservation efforts? De-extinction is an exciting and rapidly evolving field, but it's just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to understanding our relationship with nature. If you're fascinated by the idea of bringing back extinct species, there's so much more to explore. Dive deeper into the world of genetic engineering, conservation, and the cutting-edge science shaping the future of our planet. And now, as promised, here's the last known footage of the Tasmanian tiger, captured just before this incredible species went extinct. It's a haunting reminder of what we've lost. The Tasmanian tiger, easily distinguished by his straight, unjointed tail, is also a dangerous opponent, though, like the devil, is now very rare, being forced out of its natural habitat. compared to only one in captivity in the world.
If you found this story fascinating, you'll definitely want to check out my video on the extinction of the Irish elk, another giant species lost to time. I dive into how this incredible animal vanished and what it can teach us about today's conservation efforts. Click the link on screen and don't forget to subscribe for more videos on wildlife, extinction and the wonders of nature.